Okay, my name's Tim Alexander. I'm the Chief Plastic Surgeon at the Florida Center for Cosmetic Surgery. And today we're going to be talking about Brazilian butt lift or fat transfer to the buttocks. Now this is a very common operation now and uh, it was probably invented in Brazil. That's what, how it's called a Brazilian butt lift and that would be about 20 years ago. I probably started doing them about 15 years ago. Okay, well, the Brazilian butt lift basically is doing liposuction um, and transferring the fat to the buttocks. And um, it's quite successful. It's about 80% of the transferred fat keeps on uh, living afterwards. Um, first of all, we do just a regular liposuction with a rig, it's called uh, a tumescent liposuction. You flood the areas that you're going to do, which is usually a 360 lipo, which is the front and the back, but you can add areas like the back of the arms and the inner thighs and outer thighs too if you want to, if the patient needs it. Well, we do the liposuction and we gather the, harvest the fat in the sterile container and pass it through a strainer, which concentrates the fat probably to about uh, 50%. So if you get a four litres out, you end up with two litres of concentrated fat. The concentrated fat is then placed into 60cc syringes, which are rather big, and then you um, attach a number five straight metal cannula to the end of it, which is five millimetres wide, and you use a little spot just above the buttocks to inject the fat evenly on each side, and it's done subcutaneously. Uh, the average injection in the Florida Center would be about six or seven hundred cc's on each side. Um, after the surgery, the little incision holes are sewn up with small sutures and a conforming uh, garment is applied and the patient can return to the operating the recovery room and then she can go home about an hour after the surgery. She comes back the next day just to see how she's getting on, change the bandages, and uh, then you can't sit down for a week and then after a week we take all the sutures out and then they can start sitting down. We encourage them to sit down on a little like a, a, a lifesaver circular Brazilian butt lift cushion for a start. And after a month you can go back to full exercises. The I ideal candidate for the Brazilian butt lift varies actually. Surprising enough, on quite light, small people you can get quite a good result because a small amount of fat makes a big difference. Uh, on a, an area of a person who hasn't got any buttock whatsoever. And the biggest weight it would be a BMI of uh, 35. Over that, it uh, would have to be done on a hospital and no hospitals allow the operation to be done. So it's up between BMI of 20 or 19 and 35. Yeah, some people who had a few children and they've got lax abdominal skin, they're better off to get a, a tummy tuck. But they can, you can do both procedures, but not at the same time. Sometimes you can do a Brazilian butt lift and use the fat out of the loose abdominal skin and it looks actually worse afterwards, except the buttock will look good, but the, the front will look worse. And those people, um, you, we usually tell them beforehand that they're going to need a tummy tuck to look really good. And usually they'll come around and get that done. And you can do the tummy tuck first, which works out very well too. So it's up to the patient to decide which order she wants to do them. No, well, lipo 360 by itself is a good operation. And if a person's got adequate uh, buttock projection, and you don't really need to do a fat transfer. But uh, it's usually the patient's discretion. They'll be wanting that, and, or, they, or they won't. They, it's up for them to make up their mind. I'm not gonna tell them one way or the other. Yeah, the, the expectations is a very good point because some people have very unrealistic expectations because they, they bring along a picture of, as you say, Kim Kardashian or somebody like that, and I want to look like her. Well, you know, sometimes it's possible to make them look like her, and sometimes it's not because it depends on the amount of fat they have and the amount of the shape of their body in general. So you have to go over that and try and get them to be realistic. But we've got a very high satisfaction rate, really. Yeah, gaining weight after the procedure in some ways is good because most of the fat cells now reside in the buttock. And so you, you, your buttocks will, will get, become bigger, larger, with the increased size of the fat cells. But it can come back in other places because you only take out about 80% of the fat cells when you're doing the liposuction. Right, the, the day of the surgery, the patient comes in and registers at the front desk. 
and gets put in a uh, pre-surgical room. Uh, the, the nurses talk to her, the anesthesiologist and me. And I drew markings on the patient explaining where I'm going to take the fat from and, and uh, where I'm going to place it. And in fact, it's, we usually refer to the pictures we've already taken of them and I can explain to them where their the buttocks lacking in fat. Often it's m not so much in the middle of the back, it's more to the side. And, uh, and as explained, well, most of the fat we're going to put over here, but we'll feather some over the rest so they can understand you know, where the fat's going to go. Then after the marking's done, they go back to the operating room and they're prepped and draped in the usual fashion. And we usually start off doing liposuction on the front and we roll them over and do liposuction on the back. And then when we concentrated the fat, we put in the syringes and inject it into the buttock subcutaneously. Then after that's done, we put some sutures in and then put some dressings and garments on and then the patient's rolled back on her back again and taken to the recovery room where she stays for an hour. I say she, sometimes we do men too. Uh, they stay for an hour and then they can go home. And they come back the next day for a quick checkup and then a week later we take the sutures out. Okay. Okay. Right, we'll talk about uh, the post-operative care now. The day after surgery, the patients come back to the office and we take off their garments for them and usually there's some little pads over the spots where we made the incisions. And we take those off and clean them up and then they can go home and have a shower if they like and they can have a shower every day. Um, some doctors don't even put stitches in just to let the draining uh, fluid drain out but we like to put them in because it becomes a bit messy if you don't. Then uh, after a week we get them back and we take the little stitches out and after a week they can start sitting down a little bit if they like on the special pillows. Then we like to see them at the end of a month when all the most of the swelling and bruising is gone and to get some pictures of them then and after that we like to see them in three months. The immediate post-operative uh, pain is like you've been working out too much at a gym. It's a muscle muscle type pain really where the uh, liposuction cannula bumps against the muscles when you're doing the liposuction. So that's the main pain, but we give you pain pills, muscle relaxers, and antibiotics to take for the first week after the surgery. Okay, if you found this video interesting um, and helpful to you, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, okay?